we will now show that if a curve is parameterized by its arc length, then the corresponding tangent vector is unit length. And you may notice a very interesting change in our motivation. Until now, although it hasn't been that long, we've been more interested in vector-valued functions as analytic objects, so we can discuss the mechanics of taking the limit of this quantity. And the associated curve was more of an after-the-fact geometric intuition. Well, now we're becoming more interested in the curve itself and its geometric characteristics. So you may say that we're pivoting towards differential geometry, which is a good thing, because ultimately we want to study real objects in the physical world. First, let me give you a visual reminder for what we mean by arc length, because it is a non-trivial concept, especially for a curve that's not straight. But I think that the string analogy makes it intuitively clear. So once again, suppose that we have a very flexible string, which however cannot be stretched. And in order to measure the arc length of a segment on a curve, have your string follow that curve perfectly, and then to find the corresponding length, take the string away from the curve and straighten it out. And then the length of the straight segment equals the length of the corresponding curved segment on the curve. So I hope that this makes the concept of arc length sufficiently clear to move forward. So how are we going to prove that when the curve is parameterized by arc length, that the corresponding tangent is unit length. Well, we will once again use the zoom argument. We will zoom in on this section of the curve so much that the curve will appear straight. So we're once again relying on an infinitesimal argument, which is not ideal. We want to move away from infinitesimal arguments as fast as possible and rely on, on finite rules of differentiation of vectors. And in fact, that's what I do for this result in my tensor calculus textbook. But I think that here it's better to give a geometric argument because it will be more intuitive. The trade-off is that we'll deal with the infinitesimal argument which is embedded in the zoom to the point that the curve appears straight. So let's do it. Let's zoom in on this segment so much that it appears straight. There it is, perfectly straight. So now let's suppose that this right here is this point. And now let's change our parameter, which is arc length, by the amount h. Then the vector that corresponds to the numerator of this fraction is this vector right here. And of course this vector points along this straight line, but what is its length? Well, of course its length is precisely h, because s corresponds to arc length. A change of h in the parameter, which is arc length, corresponds to moving a distance of h from this point. So the length of this vector is h. So the length of the vector in the numerator of this fraction is h for all h at this zoom level. And so when we divide it by h, we end up with a unit vector for all h, once again at this ultimate zoom level. So in the limit, this vector will be unit length. And this proves that when a curve is referred to its arc length, which is another way of saying parameterized by arc length, then the corresponding tangent vector is unit length, and it is denoted by capital T. The unit tangent is a fundamental object associated with the curve, and we have just found out that parametrizing the curve by arc length gives us a way of obtaining the unit tangent by straightforward differentiation of the position vector. One final note is in order. There are in fact two unit tangents pointing in the opposite directions. 
And which one you get depends on which way you chose your arc length to grow. If you chose your arc length to grow to the right, then the tangent vector will, follow, will also point to the right. And if we had chosen the arc length to grow in the opposite direction, then everything here would be reversed, and the unit tangent would end up pointing in the opposite direction as well.